click record. Um, and then uh, momentarily, I'm going to mute everybody, but um, you all have the ability to unmute yourselves. If, uh, if you're on a phone, I think you swipe left or right and you can mute, unmute. If you're on the computer, it's spacebar or at the bottom left of your screen um, is the little mute, unmute kind of a thing there. So I can, it's on the top right. Oh, it's on the top right. So, yes. Well, see, for me, it's on the bottom on left. So, um, so I'm going to mute y'all and you can unmute as you need to. Um, so again, hello and welcome, and hopefully some more of our registrants will join us. Um, I am, I'm, I'm so happy you've taken some time today. Uh, even if we are at home and not necessarily doing a lot, things are very busy now and there's a lot of stress. And I certainly appreciate you spending some time with, uh, with us here um, at NCJW. So um, first, um, in a in a moment or two, we're gonna get an issue update from some of our uh, our state policy advocates and issue leads. Um, then I'm gonna talk about some tools that you can use um, for educating and advocating, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers, check in, just let us know how you all are doing, um, that kind of a thing. But first, I wanted to throw up a little poll. Where are you all right now? Um, from a scale of one to five, one being hiding under the covers until the CDC says it's okay to come out, and five being, hey, I'm on this call, I'm ready to go. Um, so hopefully you can see the poll. Yeah. Um, no? I think, I think, Jill, it's because you and I are on the same account. Okay, so if you can't see the poll, then I'm going to put it in. I don't see a poll. Okay, then I'm going to put the poll in chat. Um, so, uh, since you can't uh, see the poll, on a scale of one to five, um, just put a number in, um, one being hiding under the covers, and five being ready to go and advocate online. Um, and let's just see where everyone is right now. Yay, five, yay, four. I put mine in chat, so I don't know. Yeah, that's what I meant by chat. Yeah. Some threes. Three to four. Okay, so nobody's hiding under the cover, so that's a really good start um, already. Um, and so I wanted to start off by introducing um, three of our four speakers. Our, our fourth speaker isn't quite on the call yet. Um, but first up, we're going to have, um, oh, are you still there? Yes, there you are. Uh, first up, we're going to have Beth Natchberg, who is uh, one of our co-state uh, policy advocates to talk about the Fair Maps Initiative. Following Beth will be Jan Schwartz, who's co-chairing our Promote the Vote uh, initiative and focusing on voting by mail. Um, and then hopefully Beverly Copeland will be joining us. Um, she's uh, one of our issue leads, uh, specifically with gun violence. And then uh, wrapping up the issue portion, uh, Jill Lexier, who is a co-NCJW Illinois SPA, is going to talk about reproductive rights, uh, state and federal. Um, so Beth, if you would like to go ahead. Thank you. Um, Fair Maps is the bill that would get stop the gerrymandering. It would set up a commission of 17 people balanced in all sorts of different ways to redraw um, the maps of Illinois districts um, for state and federal. And the deadline is absolute. So that's why I'm, I'm making a, a push for it um, to become an amendment item on the November 3rd election, it has to be passed by May 3rd. Now, we know that uh, legislature isn't in session, but that deadline is still absolute. So we're asking people to call up 
um, their representatives and their senators, because it has to be passed by both um, to be, get on, on the ballot by November 3rd. Um, and to find the numbers to call your representatives, go to changeillinois.org. And I think, Melissa, you're going to send out some information about um, exactly where to go for this to find them and call them. And you're saying, well, if it, chances are it won't even come up, why do we do it? We want our legislators to know that we're here, how we feel about issues, um, so that when we call a second time, they'll say, oh, um, she might be a pest and calling all the time, but I'm gonna listen. So it's real important to call, it's easy phone call to make, and say you want them to support the um, Fair Maps Amendment, and I, we'll send the, I'll put the numbers in the chat box. So, any, any questions? Is that short enough? <laughs> okay, and I'll put the information in the, the chat box. Okay, thank you, Beth. Um, Jan, why don't you um, tell us about um, promoting Vote by Mail, which is a, a new initiative, both um, necessary during this time of social distancing, but I, I personally think it's gonna be the future of making sure people get to vote. So Jan, take it away. Well, I will, and I totally agree with you, Melissa. So Melanie and I are the co-captains of Vote the Vote for National Council of Jewish Women nationally, and we had all sorts of wonderful plans, and then we got the pandemic. So Vote by Mail became our big push to the legislature so that we don't postpone or try to cancel the election, and so it's safe and it's fair. Saying that, there's a lot of politics involved, um, and so we joined forces with Reform for Illinois and the League of Women Voters, and we had a phone call joined by Vote at Home, which is a marvelous organization that's helped with universal uh, vote by mail in five states, and they're working on more states. The problem with us having universal vote by mail in the long run is that there's a lot of disagreement about having polling centers, um, closing those for service centers. And I don't have to go into detail with that now, but that is the deal. Saying that, however, everybody does agree that for this election, everyone should get a ballot in the mail. It is going to, when the uh, General Assembly convenes, they will be voting on several bills and with the details somewhat different between the polling stations, but everybody wants this issue. The important point is if it doesn't go through by the end of May, we will not have expanded vote by mail because there won't be time to organize it. So we will be putting out an alert on Monday uh, for people to call their state uh, senator and representative to give them a voice that we think it's a very important issue so that they do deal with it. Did I leave anything out? I have partners. I have a question. When do they reconvene? We don't the, know. Because they no that's idea. just an open date? Yeah. I think okay. we have a better, it's an open date because of the pandemic, but I think after the holidays probably. So we want everyone to know that this is a big item for all of us, that we, we think it's all important. They have a lot of work to do in May, a ton of work to do, and it all counts. So to answer that question, today is the beginning of the state spring break anyway, so they right. weren't going to be in session this week or the next. Uh, the General Assembly has stated they're going to continue to assess session cancellations on a week-by-week -week basis, and if they do convene, they will be limiting their discussion and voting on only those items that are deemed essential. So to Jan's point, we want to make sure that our legislators uh, realize that we consider this essential. So that's what we're asking, telling them, that we think this needs to be brought up in this session yeah, yeah, and that we think it is essential. Because there really isn't a bill, right, that we're it asking will be a bill, to, but there's several competing bills, and we don't want to get into who to support. Okay, so it, it's the concept we want. Right. Okay, yeah. I, I wasn't clear on that. So right, thanks. and so there is a lot of health and wealth and financial things that also have to be addressed. We want it all to be addressed. Okay. okay. You want me to take the floor now, Melissa? I've got something from Bev, if she doesn't. Oh, okay. Questions? So yeah, Jill, why don't you go ahead then? All right. 
So Beverly Copeland is our expert on gun violence. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, the sales of liquor have gone up. Unfortunately, gun sales have gone up. Uh, unfortunately, in Illinois, gun uh, shops are considered to be essential services, and and we've never had more sales than ever before. It's really very sad. Uh, but legislatively, uh, we have been working through coalition to pass what was called Fix the Foid. That was the firearm operator ID process to close some of the gaps there. And it was making its way through the, through the legislature when of course now we have a suspension of the session. The bill has also been renamed the bio bill, block illegal ownership bill. It was getting quite a bit of traction. Um, and speaking of coalitions, uh, there's a new consolidation of a couple of the coalitions we've been working with and we're very pleased with that. You'll see the names um, Gun Violence Prevention Education Center, GPEC, and Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence, ICHV. They have merged now, and I hope that will make a really strong push. So that's gun violence, unfortunately. Um, now for reproductive rights and health and justice. Uh, re reproductive health is always a top line issue for us, both here in the state and in and federally. Uh, I think many of you will recall that last spring, Illinois passed the Reproductive Health Act, the most one of the most liberal health care measures in the country. It actually ensures that everyone in the state of Illinois has the fundamental right to make autonomous decisions about one's own reproductive health, and that includes contraception, pregnancy benefits, testing, abortion procedures, and other related health care. And it actually forbids the state or local governing body from restricting access to any of those services. So it essentially protects people in Illinois if Roe v. Wade were to be overturned nationally. But nationally, as I'm sure many, many of you are aware, is quite a different story. And as a matter of fact, during this very challenging time, states like Texas, so Ohio and Louisiana have tried to use the coronavirus virus pandemic as a means of restricting abortion, forcing clinics to cancel patients' appointments, considering these are sort of non-essential healthcare procedures when in fact there's a very time-sensitive healthcare procedure. So NCJW believes that access to comprehensive, affordable, and equitable healthcare is every person's right. So nationally, we have been working uh, on a bill called the Women's Health Protection Act, which would guarantee providers an affirmative statutory right to deliver this care and actually sort of preempt some of these bans that have been put on healthcare providers. But again, I have a feeling now with other things on everybody on the legislator's mind, this will now be put on the back burner. But it's too bad because, of course, we've had these challenges now in Texas, Ohio, and Louisiana. And uh, right now, there's actually a Supreme Court. We're actually awaiting a Supreme Court decision. Uh, it was heard on March 4th. It was the June Medical Services, which is, takes, which is a Louisiana um, abortion provider that was uh, challenging the most recent restrictions that Louisiana was putting on abortion providers. And uh, we thought that, that, that we wouldn't get a decision for quite a while, but the Supreme Court now has stopped hearing new cases. So we actually might get the decision sooner than we expected because they're not hearing other, other cases. So that will be something to watch for. So back here in Illinois, we continue to work with our Reproductive Health Access Coalition. It's co-led by ACLU and Planned Parenthood. And the next legislative effort that we had been working on was, get, was repealing the Parental Notification Act, PNA. That would remove the need for young people to get parental or guardian approval for an abortion because un the unfortunate reality is not all young people feel safe notifying their parents of a decision like this. And, and actually it's the only healthcare decision which a pregnant minor in Illinois um, uh, could make that actually triggers a forced parental involvement because pregnant minors are allowed, can consent to all other medical care from receiving medication to an epidural or a C-section without any parental involvement. They only have to get parental involvement for abortion. 
And decades of research and experience have demonstrated that forced parental involvement laws like this hurts young people and really serves no purpose. So unfortunately, the, um, we are actually on a call tomorrow to get an update on this, but I have a feeling it will also be one of those back burner items now that the General Assembly may or may not, or may convene late or may not convene at all. But speaking of young people, we are working proactively with a new coalition to promote what's called the Healthy Youth Act. That, is being that was being introduced. Those efforts are suspended, but the work continues. This legislation would update sex education here in Illinois to include consent, healthy relationships, gender identity, sexual orientation, racial justice, and equity. These are topics that are already on students' mind. It would help young people learn about the difference between healthy and unhealthy relationships, understand the importance of consent and, and body autonomy, and actually may help to reduce the risk of sexual violence. It's unlikely that's going to be taken up in this session, so the coalition is actually shifting to information gathering and um, outreach to educators during this time. I hate to end on such a uh, down note, but we, we did talk about sexual violence. And during this pandemic, people are at home much more and they're much more home much more together. And the domestic violence hotlines are absolutely been flooded with calls. Um, this is sexual violence, particularly domestic or partner violence is very much a concern during the pandemic and these stay at home orders. I mean, I can't imagine being forced to stay home with your advisor during this time. Um, Beth uh, and the rest of the City Salon folks convened a wonderful educational evening on March 23rd with speakers Naomi Sensor and Vivi Rifkin from Shalva, where they had a great discussion about the dynamics of abusive relationships and how to respond. And Shalva is working on some state bills here in Illinois to protect women at their most dangerous time for them when they're leaving the relationship. We're gonna include the, um, uh, Beth, I think we were gonna include the uh, notes from that salon as well as the bills in the yeah. follow-up materials from this call. Yes. So we don't have to go over the specifics, but right. one of the bills does actually ask for a domestic violence task force to be created. So that is hopeful. But I th think one of the things we can all do to support um, to support women and uh, victims of domestic violence is to contribute to our NCJW Mother's Day basket projects. This is something we can do right from our home. We actually support two domestic violence shelters, one in uh, Downers Grove out here in the western suburbs and one in, is it Northbrook or Glenview? Someone help me out. Evanston. Evanston, thank you. And uh, so we provide the women in the shelters with some goodies, um, and some personal items uh, for, for Mother's Day. We'll see if that actually happens on Mother's Day this year, but we are in contact with the shelters. And when you, uh, and then we actually send a card to whomever you designate, a mother, an aunt, just a special woman in your life. And we let them know that, um, that that a donation has been made in their name and um, wish them a happy Mother's Day as well. So that's one thing we can do, a small thing we can do in the meantime to, um, to help uh, victims of domestic violence. Thanks. Okay, well, back to me so that you don't have to look at me. I created a, uh, a keynote. PowerPoint. So that's super exciting. Um, so I'm going to share it right now. Okay. So um, thank you everyone for, um, for updating us on the issues. These are very much uncharted waters. Advocating for progressive issues is a challenge on a daily basis, uh, even so more now when we cannot leave our homes. Um, and when people are, you know, at, you know, three, four, a couple fives, but people are still not quite uh, comfortable with our, our current reality. 
Um, so I want to honor where everybody is at uh, their comfort level. But at the end, I'm going to challenge you to take at least one, um, one action. Um, so first, I would say, let's look at this as an opportunity to think about how we can use the tools that are available to us in our homes um, to educate and advocate. My husband recently said it's like um, that scene in Apollo 13 where they've got to fit the square thing into the round holes and all I've got are these things on the ship and the duct tape and they do it. And so we've got to use what we have um, to get this done. So NCJW wants to educate and activate our members, supporters, elected officials, the general public, and you may want to do that too, but as well as activating and educating your friends, or coworkers, family, um, neighbors that you are six feet away from. Um, so um, let's take a look at some of the tools um, that we have available. So there's certainly video conferencing, like we're on Zoom right now. There's FaceTime, Google Hangout. Um, I have, um, I have a couple friends, we exercise together um, twice a week on FaceTime from our respective homes. I have another group, we knit together um, on Google Hangout. And maybe the next time, maybe instead of just knitting, maybe I'll use that opportunity to bring up um, an issue that's really important to me and just kind of see what they think about that issue too. Um, so that's a great thing to do. Um, then of course, we've got our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, LinkedIn, there's a ton of them out there. And then um, just some general online tools. There's witness slips, which I'm going to talk about. Um, that's an Illinois thing. Um, there's listservs, everybody including NCJW, we have listservs and email subscriptions um, that you can sign up for. Um, and then also there's a lot of action opportunities on the NCJW Chicago North Shore website as well as our national website. Um, so an important thing to think about is what are you trying to convey and how best to convey it? Do you want a monologue or a dialogue? Um, are you just trying to take your message, your issue, and get it out there and have it amplified by other people? Or do you want to have more of a conversation with people? I started recently, again, not in an advocacy capacity, but 25 days ago on the first day of social distancing for my family, I just started a Facebook post, social distancing day one, with like a little thing that was happening. And more than anything I've ever posted on Facebook before, my friends are commenting, oh, you had that for dinner, I had this for dinner, or um, oh, I'm so frustrated because of this. And it's become this conversation, not just between me and my friends, between my friends from completely different parts of my life. Um, so that's been a nice opportunity for some dialogue. Um, so there's lots of kinds of video conferencing. Obviously, we're on Zoom. Um, anyone can get a Zoom account. There's paid accounts, there's free accounts, there's Skype, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, free conference call. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities to, to access these things at no cost. So it's, um, it's certainly a great way to um, to have meetings with friends or coworkers, one-on-ones. Um, we even have an opportunity if anyone is interested. Um, we have, as you heard, Jill and Beth and Jan um, so far, and then we have some other issue leads. They can come virtually into your home if you wanted to set up um, a little coffee with some of your friends, and then um, they come in and, and happily educate and engage your friends on one of our issues. So that could be a fun thing to do. Um, let's see, what's next? Um, okay, so best practices. This, oh. this. Do you wanna take questions after or while we go? Uh, we, let, while we go, that gives me a chance to remember to slow down because I'm talking too fast. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have any personal thoughts or experiences of when a Zoom is more appropriate than Google Hangouts or? Have you had? I mean, I, I think Google Hangouts without a paid membership, you can't record. Zoom, I believe you can still record even um, on a free. Um, and there are other features they don't have on, on um, Google Hangouts that Zoom has. I know um, both Google Hangouts and FaceTime, uh, depending, 
with Zoom, when people come on, it just kind of moves the, the people over. You see all the people, or you can arrange how you see your different people's faces. I got dizzy the other day. Google Hangouts started, like, juggling people around. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's personal preference. Um, they all have um, capacity for handling multiple, handling multiple people. Um, so, yeah. I've not used Google Hangouts, so I was quite interested. Thank you. Okay, so um, so just some best practices for using. Obviously, download and test your software prior to the meeting. Make sure you know how to do the mute and the video. Um, and then, of course, mute yourself unless you're speaking. Ask your questions via chat. Or um, sometimes there's a raise your hand feature. Don't interrupt other speakers. And then this, be aware of your surroundings and your visual appearance. Originally, I had a virtual background with the Tiger King guy on, but then I decided to change it. Um, especially if you're, you're trying to be in, in a more professional setting, like just think about, do I want a crazy virtual background behind me that's distracting? Um, do I want my elliptical behind me, which is not the most professional thing? Um, and then this picture of this potato woman, if you happen to see the news last week, she was playing around with filters. She accidentally transformed herself into a potato on her work call and could not figure out how to unpotato her. So she was a potato for the entire call. So um, that's definitely something to be aware of. We don't want to be potatoes. And then um, uh, be aware of privacy if the session is being recorded as this is. This is something I only learned um, last week. If um, there's the ch you have the chat function and you can send messages to the group through chat or to individual people through chat. Uh, I learned last week that when a, a meeting is being recorded, a Zoom meeting, the chat is being recorded, all of the chat. So you should just be careful of any snarky comments you might put like, this is a really boring meeting because it's gonna be recorded and people are gonna see it later, so. <laughs> Luckily, I have not done that, so that's a good thing. Um, does anyone have any any questions on best practices for video? Then I will go next. Um, I have a quick question. Yes. Do we have Do we have to tell people they're being recorded prior to recording them? Is that? I think we do. Okay, I'm just asking because I don't. I we do. By law, you have to let people know. Okay. All right. I was just making sure. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, so, oh, <laughs> in my notes, my other best practice is to wear pants because it's important to wear pants when you're on. You never know. Right now, we're just seeing the top halves, but what if I have to reach up to get a book? Um, so, yeah, pants. Um, okay, so social media. Um, most of us, if not all of us, are on it. Um, I had a second poll, but the polling doesn't seem to be working right right now. So um, I guess just uh, trying to get the chat back. Um, well, I've lost my chat. Um, does everybody here have a Facebook account? Pretty much, you know. Um, how about Twitter? No. No. Um, Instagram? No. Oh, Beth. Uh, yes. LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> and, and then Pinterest. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That so, one I can I ask a question about the chat thing? If yeah. You, if you just type in there, does it like automatically show up or is there a what you have to send it? I, I've never used it until. When you hit return. Yeah, it'll send it. If you type in there and hit return or enter, it should send. Okay. Um, although right now with screen sharing, I'm not sure. It comes up. Okay. It comes up. Um, I have 11 grandchildren. That's why I know all the different <laughs> things. Keep me trying to follow them. <laughs> um, so here's just a couple. Facebook, um, almost everyone uses it. Just about all elected officials are going to have a Facebook page. Um, it's great for sharing larger quantities of information. You want to share a blog post, articles, pictures, graphics, links to articles or action items. 
that's really good. Um, and then, but Facebook, just because of the nature of the Facebook feed and their algorithms, you don't want to share too many times a day. So Facebook is really more of a once a day, once every other day, um, unless, unless it's something you really got to share. Um, it, but it's more of like a once a day kind of thing. Whereas Twitter is a little more of a conversation. Um, a lot of elected officials have Twitter accounts and it will be in the follow-up materials. There are links to lists where you can find your elected official and then you can find your elected officials social media information. Um, so Twitter obviously um, It's for shorter things. You can only have I think 200 and 70, 280 characters now, um, 280. 280. Um, so it's also good for action alerts, um, but they recommend you can post on Twitter multiple times a day. You can have ongoing day long conversations on Twitter with short little, little quips. Um, that's, a, that's a good resource um, for that. Then um, Instagram, honestly, I, had, I got Instagram at first because I needed to see what my kids were doing. Um, I follow a lot of um, I follow a lot of other people because of some of what they post uh, is very interesting. Fo um, photos, short videos. Um, when we're at a big NCJW meeting, like our national convention, things like that, I will post pictures on Instagram um, for NCJW. Um, and then LinkedIn. Um, I don't personally. I have a LinkedIn account. I don't really use LinkedIn. Um, that is something that um, I think NCJW and myself, we need to venture a little further into that because that's really good for um, a really um, more on like the professional side or the advocacy, being a resource um, for leadership training, um, things like that are really great through LinkedIn. Um, oh, and some social media best practices. There we are. Um, you, the thing, um, what? Sorry, who? Oh, sorry. I was going to talk, but I noticed Debbie had her hand up before me. So. <laughs> I can't well, I did, see everybody, so feel free to that, jump in when you need to. I was just going to say, we Melissa is doing a really good example on Facebook these last few <laughs> days with our matza, who is going to different parts. I mean. We have a matzah with Google googly eyes, or Google eyes. Yes. And, and it's where is the matzah today? So today the matzah was on Zoom coming to this meeting. It's very cute. <laughs> She's done a very good job with that. Very good. Thank Just you. thought I'd throw that in there. Thank Melissa, you. can you also review on the previous slide which? Um, so we actually have an NCJW CNS Ooh. Facebook page. Yes. Uh, do we have one for, t I think we have a Twitter account. We, yes, we have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, and an Instagram. And um, the, the links, the handles for all three of those are in the follow-up material. Okay. Um, we post regularly on Facebook. Um, we post sometimes on Twitter and a little less occasionally on Instagram. Um, and then technically we also have um, a YouTube page which uh, we post things like um, last year we had our big um, Hannah G. Solomon Awards banquet. So we posted a, the video of the banquet on our YouTube page. Um, and then the link is shared on Facebook. So really, if anyone is interested in keeping up with NCJW, our most active place is Facebook. Okay, thank you. I uh, belong to a group that ha regularly has Twitter meetings that you type, if they say in three to four, we're gonna have conversations um, and you type in the hashtag, whatever it's about and people talk. I participated in a couple of them. They're sort okay. of neat. Yeah, they're cool. I think they're called Twitter storms or something. Yes. yes. Oh, I think I was gonna say that during one of the previous slides. Um, Twitter storms are great to get um, a group together and sort of Twitter chat um, and then live tweeting um, sometimes during programs, rallies, events, and you can use a hashtag and um, just kind of live tweet as something's going. It's a great way to keep a conversation, um, keep a conversation rolling. Um, so here are just some best practices uh, 
certainly tailoring your message to your audience. Are you trying to reach a particular elected official? Are you trying to educate your friends? Um, be specific and timely. If a bill has already been voted on, you don't need to send a message saying, please vote on this bill to an elected official. Instead, hopefully you're sending a thank you for voting the way we wanted you to vote um, message. Images are really important. They stand out. Um, there's a lot of text on your different feeds, Twitter and Facebook. And um, without an image to break it up, people sometimes keep scrolling. And then, of course, be passionate. If you are passionate about an, an issue, make sure you're including that in how you're writing um, in your post or your tweet. And then um, there will be, as I said, in the follow-up material, lists of, uh, lists of Twitter handles for elected officials, but that's the at symbol. And you say, you know, um, at Senator Durbin and, and your Twitter post, or your Facebook post, and that's how they or their staff will know that you are trying to um, get their attention. Jill. I couldn't raise my hand on my thing. I do want to, I love being passionate. The one caution I will make is that as NCJW, uh. Uh, we must be nonpartisan. We are a 501c3 organization. Uh, so when you're, uh, when you're being passionate on your own Twitter account or Facebook, please try to uh, make it clear that this is your own personal opinion. There are some of us who are a lot more active than others, and people know that we're involved in NCJW. So uh, I think we have to be quite, so be, pretty specific and pretty clear when you're, um, if you're deciding to take a partisan viewpoint personally. So try to make that distinction, please. That's great, thank you. Um, thank you for pointing that out. That is very important. Um, so yes, so, um, and then the other thing is um, hashtags. Um, hashtags, if you're not familiar with them, you see them, but what do you do with them? You can enter them as search terms and you will come up with everybody else's post on that particular topic. So it's a great way to add your voice by using that hashtag. You can create your own hashtag, or if you're really interested in a particular subject or you wanna tweet or post on a subject, you know, type in the Reproductive Health Act. You can see what some of the hashtags that have been used for those in, in other posts, and then you can use those same hashtags so that way you're continuing the conversation and getting your post noticed. Um, so the next thing I wanna talk about are some different online actions. Um, first is witness slips. I'm gonna go into detail about witness slips momentarily. Um, social media on the um, NCJW social media and, and on our website and on our um, our website and our social media, as well as our national organization, we have a lot of action items that we're posting, um, particularly on our website. If you can see on the image, all the way in the upper right corner, I have the word act circled. Um, if, you can, if you can see that, uh, if you press, if you click on act, you will have um, three local actions you can take. And then you scroll down a little lower, there will be um, three or more national actions you can take. So really easy advocacy that you can take from your sofa um, right there. And then um, those are updated. Um, National is updated um, pretty frequently. And then our local section, that's going to start being updated every Monday. Um, then, of course, other organizations also have their own listservs, their own um, Facebook page. So if you're passionate about something, reproductive health rights and justice, make sure you're following um, Planned Parenthood Illinois, um, some of the other organizations that are, are at the top of that. Um, and then of course your elected officials, um, it's good to follow them. How, what are they saying about the issues? Are they posting things that you agree with or not agree with? And so um, definitely seek them out, seek out and follow their Facebook pages and Twitter pages, um, Instagram pages. Um, and all of that. Um, so I did want to mention witness slips. Witness slips are, um, are for Illinois, they're not federal. 
Um, if you have not yet done a witness slip, one of the best things you can do is, um, and again, this information is in the follow-up materials, um, you can go to my.ilga.gov and register. And that way, not only will every time you do a witness slip, your basic information is going to be auto-generated um, to save you time, but you can go back and see the witness slips that you entered um, and, and just keep a record of what you've submitted. But it's a, a great method of communicating your opinion on a particular bill with legislators at a bill hearing. So if there's a hearing, people can appear in public for the hearing, um, but you don't wanna go down to Springfield, you can fill a witness slip and that appearance is recorded in the, um, the register and the elected officials um, pay attention to the amount of witness slips filed uh, as a proponent or an opponent of an event. Um, and when National Council sends out a request for witness slips, we will give you our recommendation, whether we recommend you be a proponent or an opponent and the other information you need to complete um, the witness slip. Um, Jill, do you have anything to? Yeah, I do. Like, um, oh, it, when a, a witness slip is called when a bill is in a particular stage, and I, I don't remember exactly where it is, but there's a, a note sent out to everyone, pro and con. And um, the, the groups that we generally differ on, um, frequently they'll, they'll have 400 people si signing a witness slip, supporting something that we're against, and to the tune of like 400 to 20. Mm -hmm. So it's real, if, if you see witness slip, si fill out a witness slip, do it as soon as you can. And there's it's generally like a, a two or three day window as well. So yeah, they usually, yeah, they're usually called for as they're going into their committee hearing. And as Melissa mentioned, the, the legislators pay quite a bit of attention yeah. to how many witness slips have been submitted. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then um, the next thing is, uh, this is a little action item. Again, this information will also be in your follow-up materials. Um, but this is relating to what Beth talked about on the Fair Maps Amendment. Um, so um, what we're, one of the things we might ask you to do, if you're willing, is to um, reach out via social media to your elected officials, um, to your state senator, your state representative, as well as, um, as um, uh, Beth. Is Don Harmon a senator? Is he the head of the state senate or the head of the state house? He's head of the state senate. Okay, thank He's you. Pre president of the state senate. President, thank you, sorry. Um, as well as him, um, asking him to support the Fair Maps Amendment and to call it for a vote um, prior to May 3rd. And we're gonna send you um, the hashtags you need, people to tag, uh, ways to find your own senator and representatives, um, uh, Twitter handle, and as well as uh, text. This is good sample text for Facebook, and then a slightly shorter text um, is also in the materials for Twitter, um, as well as the image. And so um, uh, you're gonna get that, and then um, I'm almost done with my portion, and we'll have Q&A soon. And if you have any questions on how to actually um, do that, I'm happy to explain, answer, whatever you need. Um, and then check your email inboxes tomorrow and you'll get a copy of the PowerPoint, um, helpful links for contacting your elected officials, um, some image guidelines for social media. You can pretty much put any image anywhere, but there are definitely sizes that look better on Instagram versus Facebook versus Twitter. Um, and then um, some information on our upcoming events, advocacy resources, and the action items for the Fair Maps um, social media action. And there's my email, which you will have if you don't already. Um, sometimes my emails go into your spam filters. And so if you don't get this email um, by noon tomorrow, please, please reach out to me and I will make sure I can get it to you. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. See. That was great. Hey, there you all are. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, so um, before I open it up to everyone, um, as I said, I want to challenge you all to take at least one action. Um, whatever you're comfortable with at, at your level of where you are right now. Um, so first would be to please, you know, if you're comfortable, send out the Fair Maps action alert. And there's also phone numbers in there to call um, uh, uh, Mike Madigan. Madigan? Mike Madigan. Um, so there's some phone hey, numbers. What? Speaker of the House. Yes. Um, I don't have that note in front of me, so I'm like, I can't remember quite what it says. But it's got phone numbers, the action alerts. Um, or I would challenge you to set up a virtual meetup with friends just to talk about an issue that's important to you. Um, or I challenge you to sign up for a listserv, our listserv, anybody's listserv on you know, an issue that is important to you. Um, or just reach out to someone and connect with them. See how they're doing, tell them how you're doing. And, and if the opportunity arises, um, you can talk to them about the issues that are concerning you, whether they're these issues, whether it's um, how are we gonna get through this COVID crisis? What if I lose my job? Um, food insecurity, just, um, just the act of connecting with someone. That's a, a challenge. And the final challenge is just for some people, although everyone here was a three or higher, just getting out of bed every day is a challenge and an accomplishment. And so if you are getting up every day and putting on pants, even if they are yoga pants, which is what I'm wearing every day, then that is something. Um, so that is all I have, and I'm just gonna sort of open the floor now um, for everybody. Laura. Good question. Um, and, and maybe this is just a little clarification. So we talk about the FAIR maps, the May 3rd deadline, um, and we're encouraging them to vote in favor of it, but are they voting or? No, I, this is, um, and I'm sure there's going to be much discussion and, and jockeying back and forth. Um, I believe that there's nothing, if, if the legislature does not get back into session until May 4th, um, it, it's sort of fucked, excuse my language. <laughs> I agree with the language. <laughs> because the six well. month deadline is six months. Well, they change so, deadlines for everything else. Can't they change that deadline? Well, we don't want them to change the... the well, if we November. want it on the ballot, not that... No, they can't change November 3rd, the May 3rd deadline. I don't think so. I think it's a... a, a because they have to print it? Well, nobody's even doing that. So, no, you know... No, it's, it's like, not a ballot. No, that's not a ballot. No, that's it's different. A, no, I think there's statutory um, mm -hmm. requirements that for a bill for something to come up to be an, an amendment, it has to be done six months before, ah. as opposed to, um, well, we're gonna change it because of the- So I'm then it would be two years change. from now, it would have to be on a, years. off year, yeah. two years. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, 10 years. It'll because it has to be coincided with the census. Right. Okay. Right. Census. So why did they think of just doing this now? We've had 10 years to work on this. Right. Hello. Oh, this, this <laughs> people have been working on this fair maps amendment for several long time. For long so time. the odds of it getting through by May 3rd are slim to I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just wondering. <laughs> it's still important to know to let I'm Beth Nadberg um I belong to mm -hmm. Nancy JW, you know to let them know what, what, what we're thinking and that, that we okay. haven't stopped arguing, um, promoting things or following them. Okay. okay, thanks. Well, the League of Women Voters has a 50 state initiative on, on the fair maps, Who's um, on fair maps oh, too. So yeah. it's not like we're out there alone. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. They've been very, very active and have been working on that for a while. So um, it's not like we're just sitting out okay. alone yeah. on that. Are other states doing a better job of it? Yes. I don't there know. Several states oh. that were re done by a computer, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what, um, what it would be done it, by. And th that would be what, how we oh, would do it. No. Okay. I, it's only three or four states, but <laughs> several have done. Yeah, but still, you know, when you get started. So, yeah. Anybody? 
Anybody else have any questions, comments? Just want to let us know how you're doing, or um, what, what are some things you've done on uh, on social media or using Zoom, different, the different tools that have been successful at, at reaching an audience. I think one thing that we can say is that after we get through this pandemic, that um familiarity of everyone of using online conferencing will you know mm -hmm. be pretty pretty universal among our prospective audiences for doing a webinar let's say we wanted to have a speaker but they're in washington or whatever i think everyone um is much i mean they're just using it for satyrs this week <laughs> you know they're using zoom so i i think there will be um that you know that 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 barrier that wall to leap over um, is going to be a lot shorter as far as getting people to participate if we want to do events like that or online only in the future we may get more people willing to try it yeah i mean our board for those of you who are not on the board but on this call our board meetings are all on zoom in the evening so um and we've been doing that all year so we were pretty well ahead of the curve when this happened so that it works pretty well for us we'd yes, like we to see been using it yeah for two or three years mm -hmm. wow. so it you know so we're because we're so spread out that it's very helpful for us to to do it by zoom mm -hmm. people get used to stuff <laughs> we all get used to stuff i can <laughs> so, say i um, love it actually I'd rather do this than be in a car getting somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and for yeah. us out here in the Western Burbs, we don't get to see you all very mm -hmm. much. Um, right. But I would also say that in my with my other hat on um, as the Illinois now president, um, our other state presidents have just started once a week getting together. So we've got folks from California to Florida that may have spoken on the phone, but now we're face to face. So now, I mean, it's, it's a much different way than just being on the phone or something to see each mm -hmm. other, to see our reactions. So I think it's been fantastic because mm -hmm. we never, we get together once a year, so. Yeah. Oh. Melissa, you're muted. Melissa, you're on mute. <laughs> um, the. Okay, so, um, I mean, that's all I think we have. If anyone else, you know, if, uh, we can continue the conversation. If people have more they want to share or just general check-ins, what are you doing for Passover? Um, but that is all that I personally have to share um, for today. So, I, I think it was a great meeting. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. It was a great Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Always good to see everyone. So. An idea, maybe we could have single sessions on Twitter and a single session on each of the different media for like <laughs> 102 for that. Little social media, we have that whole, there's a thing from um, National yeah, yeah, that for the marketing part. Yeah. So Twitter is a different format than in, in the, the language used on Twitter is much less, is much more colorful <laughs> than the language you follow. Doesn't it that well, well, it doesn't really. I mean, I, I follow all sorts of different people. It seems pretty colorful, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. I have probably more people blocked than I follow. <laughs> because I don't know how to block. That's great. Oh no, you just hit those three little dots and one of them will say block this guy and I just block them. So, you know, so it's a, just beware that it could be a little more colorful than Facebook. So. Well, speaking of the, the webinars and Zoom calls, there's it looks mm -hmm. like a really interesting one to get us in the mood for Passover. National is running a webinar yes. tomorrow at 3.30 our time on the heroines of uh, of Passover and uh, lessons for resistance. So they're gonna, uh, lessons we can learn from midwives, Shifra and Pua, from Miriam and Yochaved and from Pharaoh's daughter and how they can shape our understanding of freedom 
during this time. So that one looks fun. Should be good. Yeah. And, in, and inspiring. Yeah. And one more plug, Melissa. What's our next thing on oh. line? So if <laughs> anyone is is free next Sunday, you know, it's just um trying to come up with some fun things um, since we're all cooped up at home um, and we'll have eaten matzah for four days and we'll be tired of butter and salt on matzah. So I'm never tired of that. Um, I'm tired of that. <laughs> I, I can't do that much of it if I want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, we're going to do a little online kind of. I'm sure there's a toilet paper joke in there. But we'll, 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 we'll move on. <laughs> on. <laughs> if you want to deal with the toilet paper crisis, eat matzah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Conservation of resources. Um, but yeah, Sunday at four, a little online cooking kind of social get together, making um, my lovely 19 year old assistant who is stuck here instead of at University of Virginia um, is going to make matzo toffee. And then to make something healthy, we're going to make a, oh. a, a kosher for Passover quinoa salad. Really? Oh, okay. So I'm impressed. Just a fun, silly Great. thing to do. So that's our next thing. Um, and then we also have two upcoming women's salons that will be online. And that information um, is in the resources that you will be getting shortly. Okay. Great. Thank so you. Melissa, is the information oh, on the women's basket, the link going to be in the follow-up information from this? Event? It's on the website, but that's great. I will, um, I'll make sure to put it in the yeah. The email too. Right in okay. Thanks. So thank you again for coming, and I hope you all have um, very meaningful, meaningful Passovers. They'll be different, but I hope they are still. Um, I hope they're still meaningful. Um, Everyone will remember the 2020 okay. Passover. That's all. <laughs> it's up to us to make it meaningful with, with our Zoom family. And yeah. thank you so much. A good job to, to all. And stay yeah. safe and stay well. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you everybody. Okay. Thanks, Melissa. Happy Passover. Thanks so much, Happy Melissa. Happy Passover. Happy Passover. Happy Passover.